Hello, Sim Racers. Welcome. Welcome. Tonight, I drive a Datsun. And later on, you choose a car and I drive it again at Pori car. And maybe later on, you choose another car and I drive it again. So, how are you doing, guys? All good? I hope you had a great week. And uh, weekend is in front of us. Yeah. So, um... Okay, mm, not much to say today. We could do also some questions and answers and stuff like that. Uh, the aftermath is, of course, uh, about to uh, to see. Uh, I would like to see if I can do similar lap times uh, with the Nissan at Paul Ricard. As you know, I just finished uh, on Wednesday a uh, very nice uh, race at Paul Ricard with the Nissan. And... Um, I would like to see, you, you know, and actually I had a message uh, somewhere, a comment in my channel that uh, uh, who, who did the setups uh, for a set of Corsa Competizione and uh, whoever did them, why do you have to choose them so much to, to go faster? Uh, probably the guy doesn't know. I do the setups. Uh, the setups are based on the actual real car. Um, homologation papers, which are, those are the safe uh, per set uh, setups, which are very safe and also made to be driven by people that they are not uh, experts, by people who drive with the joypad and so on and so on. And then we, for some cars, we had some more advanced setups from the teams. For, for, for some other cars, we made some other setups uh, that are close to how those cars should be, should be uh, uh, handled uh, during the race. And they are mainly um, you know, racing setups made at uh, the usual midday, 27 degrees and so on. Um, so, because of that, I would like to show you today if, I mean, I would also like to, to see if I can do uh, similar lap times as I did on the race, on that track with this car, by just using the aggressive setup and see what the differences are between the setup that I used uh, in the race, uh, which personally I was going pretty well and pretty fast, uh, accidents apart, and see if the aggressive setup could give me similar lap times. All right? And then after that, we can have a go and see other cars, what they can do at, uh, at Pori car maybe, or just, you know, answer some extra questions and uh, yeah, so let's have fun. Let's go in game and uh, have some fun. Um, all right. Right, so uh, wh why are we, we drinking? Ah, British GT <laughs> DLC. Soon, soon, very soon, very soon. Uh, so practice uh, 20, I will go to 21, which is uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, that was the pretty much uh, the time of the day where I was doing uh, quite easily or at least easily not but often uh, 56 flats 156 flats in the race uh, with good fuel uh, I could do some low 55 uh, some sorry some high 55s so let's see if I can get our trust in Nissan here and uh, go to Polycard, uh, and um, see if I can do a 56 flat with the uh, with the aggressive setup. <laughs> Come on, guys! No, it's not tonight, of course. Of course, it's not tonight. <laughs> All right. So aggressive setup. Uh, I will, of course, put. Uh, almost full fuel. Let's let's go down to 90 because at, at around, actually let me put the 105 fuel that we were starting and then go here and put 90, which is pretty much when the car started to be faster, uh, around 90, 80 liters, when the car started to be faster in uh, in the race. Uh, hey, Irox, uh, thank you so much, mate. Thank you so much, mate. Well, we, we're all, we are always here. Actually, let me tell you something, guys. I, I owe you that. Uh, I would like to help you, each one of you. I know that I'm usually live streaming uh, when other much more famous streamers have their races. 
uh, other leagues have the races you might having you know but you are always here you are always supporting me uh, I also see you that you are you know watching also the videos after the live stream uh, this channel keeps growing so thank you so much I really really enjoyed to to, to be here with you and I really live uh, like and love the chat that I can interact with you guys and I think it's coming mm, into maturity that at some point we should start also interacting into the track. Maybe we can organize some sessions of lessons or um, academy style stuff, but easier, of course. I don't want to you know, steal the, the job from the guys that have proper academies. Uh, or maybe some small fun races, something like that. We'll see how we can do this. Uh, but it's, uh, it's time, it's time. Hey, Christian! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to the circuit again. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, guys. You're, you're really, really very, very good, guys. All right, so um, let's go back. Uh, as I said, aggressive percent, changing nothing. Uh, it is as it is. The only thing that we're going to do right now is I'm going to go out. Uh, do some laps and check obviously the uh, the pressures because uh, of course the aggressive setup is made for midday which is much much hotter now uh, the track temperature is 19 I think in the race it was even lower than that something like around 17 16 degrees but it's okay 19 no worries um, but I, I have to, to check uh, the pressures uh, so let's do a couple of laps and see how it's going. Green light. Give it all you got. Let me check. Sound is okay, I guess. Let me know if there are problems to the sound. But I think it's fine. My fish are doing fine. Thank you so much. They are swimming around. Happy puppies. And uh, yeah, I have to change the filter. Because uh, after all these years, I think it's uh, it's about time to, to change the external filter on the big aquarium. Because uh, every time I clean it, and then after just a while, uh, the uh, the flow goes down again, and it's really really slow. I, I need some more flow because I have some algae forming right now, which is not good. So I need some a little bit of extra flow. But other than that, no problems. Uh, the absence of uh, roadmap for 2021 is unfortunate, and I agree with you, Michele, but um, it's impossible for us to, to commit to something that we still do not know what is going to happen. Because of the damn pandemic, uh, we still, and SRO still, do not have a clear image of what is going to happen with the races, uh, the teams, uh, the trucks, uh, the countries that they will visit, it's still all up in the air. I mean, obviously, they moved ahead and they obviously announced where, uh, what the calendar will be for 2021, but that doesn't mean for us that it's going to be, you know, exactly like this. So we cannot afford to start investing and then having to change or maybe do a truck that will be never used, you know. So it's, it's very, very hard. This is one of the main, main reasons of why we haven't posted any, um, how you say, um, you know, timeline yet. Uh, I hope in the following months to be able to, you know, to inform you better, guys, what we are going to do. But right now it's really difficult. Obviously, we will not just sit here and doing nothing. So expect uh, updates, expect, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, but expect things as usual. Uh, but we don't know either. It's a city situation for everybody. A little more engine volume, we can fix that. Options, we are offline. How do you let me put this somewhere around uh, 38? I had it 40. 
I had it uh, down to be able to hear the guys from TeamSpeak because TeamSpeak is a little bit more difficult to, at least for me to, to uh, you have to go through each one and change the volumes and so on. Should be better. <clears throat> Pressures, of course, are very low as we expected. Let me do at least two laps. I mean, guys, uh, here where I live, in Lombardy, uh, in Italy, North Italy, we've been pretty much in red zone uh, since the, the start of the pandemic with just some, uh, a month uh, or, or two of, uh, you know, freedom. And then we were like in yellow zone for uh, not even a month. And then back again, again, we were now like in, in orange zone where they have separated in, in zones. And now we're back in red again. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not even able to go out uh, of my house and, you know, have a go with my Miata. I just cannot do anything. So, so imagine how difficult it is to arrange and visit trucks and teams and practically impossible. Well, we have to wait or oh, nothing else to do. Let me put some pressure on the tires, both metaphorically and literally. Of course I have a Miata Hydronics. I mean, it's always the answer, isn't it? Haven't you seen my Miata? You should follow me on Instagram. I post about my Miata every once in a while. Aris drives on Instagram. I just use Instagram only for that, nothing else. To be honest, I hate it. <laughs> Yeah, we should do some community races. I think so, RDG, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, RDG. <laughs> yeah, last, uh, last travel we managed to do was at the Nürburgring. I did some interesting lap times. Almost nine minutes flat on this. 1.6 which is pretty nice and I'm hoping next year to be able to go under 9 bridge to bridge which for the 1.6 starts to be uh, local interesting time <laughs> I don't know I don't know yet uh, as I said Poff I don't know what's uh, next for ACC because because of the pandemic we cannot commit to, to anything right now because we don't know what is going to happen. This is a this is a, the actual problem, you know. Well, exactly yes, uh, LDG is right. Next thing is the uh, British GT. After that, uh, it's still a little bit on the air. City World Miata, yeah! <laughs> Last year the Miata did 3,000 kilometers around the Nürburgring. I explored everything, pretty much. Amazing roads over there. Even some roads that the locals didn't know. <laughs> How did you end there? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most important thing, CC. Thanks, thanks so much. We are all healthy. We are relatively strong-minded and uh, good morale. So we just, you know, keep going. And I can assure you, there is tons of work behind the scenes, always, always, never, never stop. <laughs> oh, NC, sun drops, no. Actually, there are no sun drops at the ring, so... Kalispera, <laughs> Yanni!
Okay, let's uh, let's see the pressures. Right, 26, 25, okay, let's go back. Set up, current setup, current setup, and let's go up 25.8 here, and then add 6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. 25.1, so 2 here, 27.1, and then add 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's quite a bit. Um, then go here and uh, 25.8 uh, and uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 25.7, 26. So, okay, at least let's go one up here. And at least, um, how much? Uh, 27.2. Okay. So what we are trying to do is take those hot pressures and, as usually, uh, add the cold ones to take those hot pressures up to 27.6, um, 27.7, uh, somewhere around there, 27.5, depends. I don't know, Febre, you will learn all, all things, uh, you know, of... Uh, releases and everything on the official channels, not from me. Even if I would work on the console, the news are coming always from the official channels, guys, not from me. It's uh, many, many reasons why I never uh, tell you, uh, I give you previews of when things come and uh, what is about to be released. All right, so uh, we said something about 80, 80, something here. And uh, Danny, what do you mean by PCI hot temps on average? Well, yes, of course, they're on, they're on average. They're, they are exactly the moment you go into the picture, you hit ESC, right? So you, you get the pressures uh, when you hit ESC. Now, we can talk about that to today, tonight. Um, usually we hit ESC when we cut the start-finish line, but you can go a little bit extra. Um, let's, let's see what kind of lap times I can do, and then I can give you an extra tip on how you can fine-tune your setup a little bit more with the pressures, all right? The Fair Devil, I wish I knew, I don't know. Mattia, perché non guida, non guidi bene. <laughs> All right, so let's go. And see what we can do. Now I will push. We are trying to see if I can do 56 flats. Uh, and uh, see. Hey, Neuro. Thank you. Oh, former engineering teacher. Oh, my, my regards. I'm, I'm nothing, honestly. I'm, I, I still have many things to learn, so that means a lot for, for me. Thank you so much. Let's go. Temperature is 18.
<laughs> Thank you so much, Nero. <laughs> I wish it was true, I feel myself lacking in so many aspects. But you know, the best thing in life is trying to get better. <laughs> That's the best thing in life, at least for me. Curiosity and trying to get better. Uh, during the race, after the pit stop that I fixed the damage, the top speed was around uh, 279, yeah, 278, 279, something like that. It was quite good. <laughs> Lacking in knowledge. Around 79, good. Similar. With the aggressive setup. Oh, a bit too wide. Ah. <laughs> We're still having the tires coming up in temperature. Uh, yes, the tonight we'll do a little bit of, you know, question and answer, stuff like that, plus the aftermath and everything, so I'm pretty sure we'll find some time to, if you, if you can remind me later, we can do this. <laughs> We're seeing a GTR left-hand drive, yeah. Hey, Dimitri! <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for the broadcasting the other day and the questions and everything. Look at that! Look at the lap time I'm about to do. 55.8 on the aggressive on the third lap. Stop, stop, stop everything. Stop everything. Replay. Let's go and see. So... I just did a 155.8, which was one of my best lap times during the race on the aggressive setup with the same fu fuel uh, load nothing else in my second third lap now this is very important this is shows that driving is what it matters driving is what matters for our level now i'm pretty sure that an alien can gain two three tenths of a second which for him is highly important uh, by tweaking and fine-tuning the, the setup. 
Uh, I'm also sure that with a better setup, or maybe someone can make me an even better setup, I could gain maybe a tenth or something. But in drivers like us, that you know, uh, we are good Veras drivers, driving this thing between the seat and the wheel is the most important thing of all. I this is the this is the aggressive setup. Do I prefer it from the race setup? No, not really. I have some issues, but the lap time is the same. I just need to focus a little bit and control my driving style on some turns. And it does the same, the same lap times, the same fucking lap time. Probably, probably during the whole race, the aggressive setup would maybe consume my tires a little bit more, or maybe it would make me not as consistent as I, as I was with my, with my race setup that I made it specifically to feel more comfortable with the setup. Actually, when I was trying the setup with the guys of the team, at some point we had a setup that was faster and I say, you know what, guys, you know what, it's two hours race, I feel more comfortable with the other setup, I'm gonna use that one. And we thought that the other setup was faster, but in two hours race, the setup that I used was faster in the end because it permitted me to be very, very, very extremely consistent. I mean, if you saw my last stint, I was, modesty apart, quite consistent. And because I was so consistent and the tires were keep, you know, uh, providing grip and they were worn out badly, I was able to catch up the drivers in front of me, you know? so. It's the driver. The setup might give you some extra uh, comfortable uh, handling during the race, might help you, uh, you know, take care of the tires or the uh, brakes a little bit more, but we're talking really one, two, five percent of differences, stuff like that. Uh, in terms of lap times, I mean, don't expect, if you, if you think that you are slower by one second of where you should be don't expect except you know exceptional situations might might be might happen but don't expect that the setup will give you once one second might give you two seconds three seconds what it happens usually is that you keep changing the setup you enjoy the whole thing i also enjoy the whole thing i change the setup i enjoy the whole thing but while i'm doing this what i actually do is not making the car faster i keep on trying and practicing and tweaking the setup but in reality what i'm doing is making myself faster and this is this is why um, doing the debriefing after the race after the race uh, is one of the most important things and one of the biggest advantages that sim racers have we have the possibility to go back to the race with the same exact conditions and try different things and the best of this is that after the race you are extremely well trained for your car and that race combination you have wonderful muscle memory from the race and from the car you know exactly what to do and uh, that that shows that you can instantly hop into the car and do the same lap times and you can try even the default setup and it still works for you right and that will make you understand okay you know it's it's the driving it's the driving that makes the difference as i said driving gives you seconds setup gives you tenths of a second right so here here you have it i mean i wasn't even expecting honestly to be that fast that 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 fast that fast <laughs> i mean i was instantly on the same lap times and i'm pretty sure that if i if i keep going on it i will be able to do a 155.5 that was my best lap time with low fuel during the race so there you have it there you have it all right setup is about comfort yes as movie said setup is about comfort most importantly you can gain in terms of consumption of the tires of the brakes of the fuel maybe but it's all small percentages which are important which are important it's also the uh how to say the gaming aspect of the whole thing because that at least for me it works like this it permits me to focus and keep on doing laps in preparation for the race uh, 
by tweaking. You know, tweaking is enjoyable for me. I can feel the car changing and I like it. Uh, but even if I think that, oh yes, I, I did that change into the setup and I'm now faster. It's not, it's not, it's not it. It's just because I'm keep doing laps, 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 laps. And this is, this is the proof. Aggressive setup, same setup, same car, same conditions, same track, instantly 55.8. Fuck setups. <laughs> All right. No, actually not fuck setups. Setups are important, as we said, but you have to take everything into perspective. All right. Okay. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay. No, with the safe setup, I cannot repeat the same time. That's impossible. The safe setup is a safe setup. Why is that? Well, first of all, is the setup that the cars use for homologation. And when you, usually when you buy the car for the manufacturer, it arrives with that setup. And it is a setup that should work, not work, actually, should be drivable into pretty much all the trucks. Okay. So it won't kill you. First of all. Second of all, if we see that a safe setup is a little bit too extreme, we might even change it to make it even more safe because there are people out there driving with the keyboard or with the toy pad. And those people should be able to control the car. So you should start with a safe setup. But you always gain some lap time into the aggressive setup because the safe setup is higher. It is also made maybe you know for vari variable conditions so it might start raining and you still be able to control the car and stuff like that um, so it's a setup that doesn't uh, create as much extreme downforce as the aggressive setup uh, it creates more downforce at the rear to keep the rear end uh, stable and so on and so on uh, so you won't be able to do the same exact uh, lap time with the safe setup but you will be close you will be close i wouldn't expect uh the safe setup to be more than a second or half a second slower than the aggressive one properly driving so yeah okay um hi yako <laughs> thank you so much mate hi welcome guys Hit the like button and the subscribe button. Come on. <laughs> yeah, make me famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Super Spee, you said that zero wing angle is around uh, two tenths of a second faster than one wing angle just on the straight. But this happens occasionally, so yeah, the driver is the prominent factor. Here's a surprise for you. I don't know if you, you know, had a look at my setup for the race. But this is the aggressive setup that has zero rear wing. For the race, we used, where is it? The strategy one, this is the one. This setup that, as you can see, it has lower front end, very low everywhere, but it has one rear wing. I gave those two tenths of a second of, you know, uh, lap time in the um, in the long straight, but I gained them back with some extra on all the other turns because except that big straight, the uh, Puerto Rico circuit is pretty technical um, circuit with a lot of high downforce uh, turns. So uh, we did some tests, and uh, in the end we we decided. Also, I decided that with one rear wing I was similarly fast, and you saw that and more stable and better and my tires were more protected for the whole racing stint so huh? important uh david ollo uh, prendi un pc amico è una cosa che piano piano ti servirà perché comincerai a creare cose è importante uh no, solite cose down uh, Engels, down the ABS and TC up to a point. I mean, for this car, I was using TC2 and ABS4. I tried with ABS3 and 2, and it wasn't faster than me. Uh, I also was, you know, uh, ruining the tires. So again, you have to find the correct compromise. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, Chris, absolutely. You saw how it was better on, from some other cars in, in, the, in the turns. I couldn't catch them on the straight, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I thought that, you know what, it's, it's hard to overtake on the straight because everybody's fast, and it's even harder to overtake on the first turn after the straight, that it's pretty much impossible. But on all the other turns, you can do it. And I was faster than, and I was able to overtake in, in other turns. Mm, time to switch. Uh, real drivers, usually, from what they told me, they all use traction control somewhere around uh, two to three. Somewhere else. Some occasions or some cars, they might use one. Uh, but usually they are, they are all around two to three um, four, maybe, depends. Both for traction and ABS. They, they go up there. It's very, very rare that you will find a car, which might be, you know, configured that way, uh, to use traction control 1 uh, and ABS 1. It's pretty much impossible. Everybody uses somewhere around 2 to 3. Um, Super Speed, I used a more extreme setup for qualifying. Uh, it didn't pay out, honestly. I wasn't able to, to do a lap. I was able to do a 54 uh, laps with the qualifying, but I couldn't do them consistently. Uh, and it didn't pay out, and that's why I started down to the 25th position. And I paid it because uh, you remember that, you know, when you start so back to the grid, bad, bad luck might occur. And actually, let me show you that the, um, the accident on the start of the race that, you know, put me last on the grid. Um, uh, it, it was pure bad luck, actually, pure bad luck. Look at that. So let me go to the highlights. It's saved here. I had a look at this uh, after the race. Uh, OK, let's see that. Oops, somewhere around here. Let me go from the outside. Oops. Sorry. And let me show you. Look at this. Look at the, what happened. So, let's go easy here. So, you can see the accident happening over there. That Lambo gets hit and then hits me. Pure bad luck. Nobody's fault, unfortunately. That poor uh, Lambo was hitted by a spinning car and he instantly went into me. I don't know if you saw it. Let me show you again. Here it is. So that Lambo number 99, look at this, 99, pam, pam into me. Bad luck. But this is something that if you don't qualify well and you are on the back markers, um, unfortunately it happens. It happens. Uh, it happens all the time. It's, it's, I mean, it happens in real races, go figure, if it's not. And I'm, I'm starting again last, dead last, and now I'm penultimate. Yeah. But all in all, it was, uh, it was a great race uh, because I was able to, you know, move through all that and, uh, and go farther and uh, finish almost top 10, top 12. Um, ABS come preferisci impostarlo per conservare meglio le... Eh, meglio averlo un po' più invasivo per conservare meglio le gomme. Teo. Ti serve un ABS, cioè, è quello che ho fatto tra l'altro, un ABS sul 4, 5, no? Così le gomme slittano meno uh, e si consumano meno durante la frenata. Uh, ABS, choosing ABS in dry setup, uh, somewhere around 2, 3, 4 depending also how, how you feel the car, but somewhere around there. I haven't heard about the cheats from, from today. <coughs> grazie, grazie Andrea. <laughs> Beh, David, su, su PC puoi cominciare a modare, che è importante, e se non modare puoi cominciare a cambiare magari la fisica delle vetture che ci sono già dentro, capito? Cominci a metterci le mani e quello fa esperienza.
Neuro, it's, uh, it's really very rare that your tires will stay blue while racing, especially at Barcelona. So either it was a little bit damp, maybe, there was a little bit of rain or something, uh, or uh, you, you need to push more. Uh, but uh, you can improve that by putting brake ducts smaller, that will heat up the, tire, the, the brakes more, and the brakes will heat up the tires. So find the correct compromise with the brake ducts, go a bit lower, like uh, four to three at the rear, or three, two, uh, something like this, and this will help your tires primarily. And then a stiffer setup will also help your tires, especially on the dampers. Stiffer dampers will help your tires heat up more. Mm. Yeah, Chris, I mean, Chris, I, I know, I, I know how I am. I mean, I'm always consistent. I never give up uh, into a race. Uh, I enjoy racing, so I like to be able to overtake to be in the grid, you know, in, into the middle of, of, the, of the pack. And I know that if I keep going consistently, I always gain a lot of places. Uh, and, you know, the main thing is not to focus too much on the, on, on that, on the thing that, you know what, maybe I could have done a P5 or a P6. Who cares? It's not World Championship here. I mean, for the fun. So I did a P12, fantastic. Lots of, uh, you know, duels, lots of... Uh, I was happy with myself because especially from the mid first stint to the second stint, I was pushing really, really hard and I could nail without errors lap after lap after lap. That, that is a big uh, satisfaction for me. All right, so uh, that was a pretty nice uh, surprise with the Nissan. Do you guys want me to try a different car on the same track? Let me know on the chat if you want a different uh, car. Don't tell me yeah, strange things like, I don't know. Cosa è successo nel secondo incidente? Um, I, I don't even know if uh, it's uh, in the highlights. Let me let me check. Uh, let me check. I don't have the full replay, unfortunately. I mean, it's here, but it's small. It's just 11 minutes. So, so let me check what happened in the second accident. Give me a second. Let me show the the second accident. So there must be somewhere. Um, here I am. I don't remember when I went in for the pit stop. Maybe if I go inside, let's see the fuel. No, ah, it changes also. I'm 13th here. No, that is towards the end, so I don't think. Fuel 72, no. Uh, back, 20. Oops. That is just the bit before that. Uh, somewhere around here. The bit before that. Even more before that. Oh, come on. I won't be able, I think I won't be able to find it. Oh, come on! Nineteen, somewhere around here. Let's see if I can... Come on. No. Uh, it, it didn't save the highlight of that, unfortunately, no. Sorry. Right, so let's go back to the chat. Let's see what we can do tonight. 
No, you can save both full replay and highlight, almost full replay. I mean, you could save one hour and a half of uh, replay, but I just forgot and didn't save it. Yeah, actually, I remember a little bit about that accident is that I was doing the turn very well uh, on my limit. And I saw the Aston, the guy coming from behind at an extreme speed, but he wasn't going wide. You know, it wasn't like that he missed the apex or the breaking point. He was doing the perfect line, but he came. I mean, the Aston is so fast mid turn. He arrived so fast at the mid turn. And at some point I was like, what's going on? It's a warp. It's I don't know. And bam, it just hit me. I think he didn't even realize himself what, what happened because it was so unexpected. Uh, he was he, in his exa exact line and I was like, you know, stopped and he was like warp speed. And he just got me completely and we spun, half spun, something like that. So, go figure. Uh, yes, I also have a button to save the moment of highlight. Yeah. So, you guys want the Honda, I see. I see a couple of guys asking for the Honda. You can try the Honda if you want. It's a long time that I haven't tried the Honda. Honda! Are you okay with the Honda guys or do you want something else? Oh, come on, I don't drive the Rex. Ah, come on, ADZ. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> the banana. Honda banana. Banana Honda. This is not too much of a banana. Honda. All right. Okay. Okay then. Okay, let's do the Honda. Okay, let, let's try with the Honda. Uncle Nerd, we just, uh, abbiamo appena finito. Uh, ho provato la Nissan con il uh, setup aggressive sulla stessa pista che ho fatto la gara e ho fatto lo stesso identico tempo. Yeah! Abbiamo parlato un po' riguardo a questa cosa. E adesso proverò la Honda per vedere... La Honda! <laughs> per vedere come va a Poricar. Then we can try the Merc, then, if, if everybody agrees. All right, let's, uh, let's try this, uh, this Honda. It's a long time I haven't drove the, the Honda, so who knows what's going to happen. All right, so uh, aggressive setup. We will need to fix the, uh, the pressure, so let's go out with the 105 like this. And uh, yeah, something like that, and change a bit and, and see what the pressures do. Sì, 2019, come abbiamo fatto nella gara uh, di mercoledì. Yeah, the the um, all the mid uh, all the mid engine ca cars with high downforce they tend to be more um, how to say difficult and sketchy at high speed uh, pitch sensitivity so when you are costing they might be a little bit harder to to drive than the uh, the Nissan that we had uh, we'll see Traction though. Traction is different here. <laughs> yeah, that's a strange uh, V6 sound, isn't it? Need to clean my steering wheel a little bit. Just to become filthy. <laughs> Under 76, 77, 78. Don't die. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice and stable. Yeah, no more Vitek. Well, actually, they do have Vitek, but it's, you know, hidden from...
from the turbo. Beh, i nuovi AMD sono molto buoni, David. Uh, Andy, it's not that easy and it's not the same for all cars what you're asking. I highly, highly recommend you to go back to my playlist and see how we change the ride heights and how important they are on those cars depending on what you want to do. Uh, on some cars uh, it pays to have a higher uh, rear end, on some cars it pays to have identical ride heights or depending on the track maybe having a little bit higher front end, it depends. It's, uh, it's, it's not, th this is a proper simulator and uh, there are no, uh, you know, easy solutions to the problem that are identical for all the cars and all the trucks. That's why I'm telling you guys, um, you need to learn what the setups do and not just, you know, take a setup and try it and think you could uh, copy the same setup everywhere else. It's pretty stable here. I was expecting to be worse. bad a little bit of difficulties following you guys with all your questions when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is at least one PSI, yeah, absolutely. Let me finish this lap, uh, super speed. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Mortal, I have a specific video about that in my playlist. But uh, I can try to explain to you fast after I go to the pits. car handles pretty nicely though, I like it. Has a bit of turbo lag that needs an extra care and attention when it's going in. But all in all. Yeah. Ah, thank you so much CC Driver. You are the best, the best. Right, 56.9, nice, with the low pressures. Okay, so let's go to the garage and change the pressures. Uh, 26.9, let's go up 1 PSI. So 26.8 and just 1 less. Uh, 26.8, 27.2. 
and then like this uh, David th this is much more difficult to explain uh, it's not an easy answer like that it's it's it, 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 it isn't even a single answer it depends every time what you trying to do so it, it's not an answer that I can give you there's no rule of thumb honestly 26.8 so 26.1 minus 1 26.4 All right. Okay. So this is it. So um, someone asked about the fuel. So h right now I have the full fuel. Okay. And I want to simulate what is going to happen to the car when I will be, because as you know, uh, when we put fuel and ride heights and mechanical grips, uh, wheel rates and everything, then the automatic of the setup, that function of the setup tries to put back the car uh, into the correct right heads, all right? Um, while you are racing, the fuel goes down and the car becomes lighter and becoming lighter, it raises, okay? Uh, during the practice sessions, you can go into the fuel load test, to the fuel load test here and put a temporary fuel. So right now the car is going up because you can see it. I mean, I was a 72 millimeters, right? If I put a width, width, 105 liters here. If I put 10 liters here, you can see that uh, the car is raised by, uh, it's 75 at the back and 61 at the front. This is what is going to happen during the race. So that helps you understand how the car will feel during the race with uh, uh, less fuel uh, load. Okay, but now here we need something around 80 something. And let's go. <laughs> see, see, we have a new drinking game. Oops. Engine died. I think you can always do all the events, I think. I don't, I don't know, honestly, but I think you can do it. Maybe it won't put you into the... Uh, uh, into the actual uh, classification. I, I don't know, honestly. I haven't really uh, looked uh, in depth on that. Are you sure you cannot do them just for fun? but without uh, classification. I, I don't know, I don't know. Try it. Maybe I can try it later, but I don't know. A bit too aggressive for cold tires there. Oh, it's grayed out. That's bad. Why do we keep them there then? Not very good over there.
how Turbo Lag is sketchy. It, it has it has some some torque, but it's uh, it has quite a bit of uh, turbo lag. So when you go on the accelerator, oh, oh, I'm dead. That's the new aerodynamic physics under yo. You saw that before uh, with the with the older versions, I would be able to save this, but with the new versions, it just went away from me. That I had no no aerodynamic no downforce there at the rear. Okay, let's go back because the, the tires are now fucked up. And uh, yeah, set up and try again. Um, the, the problem is that um, the car has quite a lot of turbo lag. And uh, as such, um, you need to be a little bit careful. Possibly you need to go on the accelerator a little bit easier and sooner than, than what you think you should. But then at some point the turbo comes in and it can, you know, rotate the car a bit too much. I mean, look at that. And now it kicks in, you see. So you, you go in the, in the accelerator, then one, two, and then the whole turbo comes in. Also, the, the blip. Uh, the auto blip when you are downshifting is not really precise, so I highly recommend and advise you to wait a bit for the revs to go down and then downshift with this car. and everything. Uh, the fact that takes out the issue doesn't mean that makes you faster. The problem is that you would like less uh, traction control, but when you go down with the traction control because at four it makes you a little bit slower but when you go down with the traction control then the car becomes uh, nastier to, to control the accelerator so again it's a compromise ah si sì, anche il nerd tutto è diverso se neanche anche i tempi di cambiata tutto è diverso actually hear the turbo spooling up when you go on the accelerator you can hear that small whistle and then it kicks in yeah but for you're fast <laughs> Oh my god, that was almost lost in there. That's the problem with the uh, with the NS6, at least with this setup right now, but I do remember that it is a typical problem of the car. Um, if you go smooth, it's nice and polite and everything. If you start being more aggressive and, you know, asking for more turn-in, then it bites you back. I went wide again. Oh, 
lost so much time. But we are down to 56 meads, and I'm pretty sure I can do a 56 flat. Yeah, I love Winter's racing, racing myself. Winter's car are the best. See if we can improve the the last sector. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared here. You can see that. <laughs> Going down, come on, let's do our good braking here. Ah, not so good here. 55.8, here's another one. That's a fast car here, actually. It's pretty fast. Is it good for you guys? Pretty sure I can do 55 meets for, with this car. Go down to to three. The traction control. Already at three of traction control, just one level, and it starts rotating. Maybe too much. Dina. Gli alieni lo fanno Andrea, io no sinceramente, ma non sono mai stato bravo in qualifica.
Oh. Hey, I, I have downshifted one more. And as you know, in this car, downshifting at high revs can instantly cause a little bit of a lockup in the rear and hop, oversteer. That's the problems. The problem with the, with the, with the Honda <laughs> is that it is an exceptional car, in my opinion, but the electronics and the engine management and the turbo lag let it down. It's not linear when you are driving. You do not get one-to-one -one response for your inputs. Sometimes you get a little bit more, sometimes you get a little bit less, and that uh, makes you either you have to work a lot and that loses time, or even you lose a little bit of, ti of, uh, of control and that loses even more time, or you are afraid to push and that loses time. So that's the main problem with the Honda. Great car. Good, uh, um, I mean, if you, if you get the Honda, right, and you don't push it, I mean, look at that, honestly. If you get the Honda, and you don't do anything strange, and you keep the revs down, and you downshift easily, so like that, now I won't even downshift, you see, third gear, go in, look at this, stable, no problems, you see, car is very, very stable, very good, good, good uh, grip, it's it's a very nice car look at that again third gear no problems costing here no problems ask a little bit more it will do it it's a very nice car right but if you downshift if you go into the accelerator soon if you do things to force it to go a little bit extra you know when you start forcing the car this is when the electronics don't seem to work perfectly together and it doesn't give you linear um, responses to what you're asking. And this is where you either losing time, losing control, whatever, or you are afraid to push it and you keep a little bit back and you lose time again. So this is my, my idea about the, the Honda. Yeah, kick. I'm not telling it's possible. I'm, I'm not able to do 54s because I'm not so good, but uh, it's definitely possible. I saw people doing it, so. Mm. All right, so did you like that? We've managed to do with the Honda the same lap time we did with the Nissan, so it's in the ballpark, possibly even faster. Uh. Hey, Constantine, ευχαριστώ πολύ. Τωρίτο, ευχαριστώ. So, what do we do now? Do you have any other ideas, guys? Hey, ciao, Carlos. Carlos, Carlo or Carlos? Da Pesaro. Ciao. Ah, could be. I, I could have tried it. I didn't try it. Uh, Porsche, 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 three Porsches, Porsche, four Porsches, okay, let's go, let's give Porsche a go, uh, obviously the Evo, I guess, nice car, wonderful, I mean, look at that, mm, sexy, mm. <laughs> so cool, yeah, really nice, really nice. Costa's got a not slife it, drink. Everybody. Costas wants not slife, so we have to drink. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Porsche then. Porsche it is. Do you prefer to go to the twenty nineteen or the twenty twenty tires? Because Michele asks for the twenty twenty tires. So let me know. Obviously, 2020 tires should be faster, a, a tiny bit, maybe nothing, but the car should be should behave better. So let me know. Twenty twenty. All right, let's go. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Pori car again. And uh, Porsche. <laughs> nice. Mm. Wonderful. Look at this. Mm. 
There is also the other one with the with the arrow. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> what else do we have here? Oh, that's interesting too. Hmm. And, uh, then we have the KSMG, which was racing with the Nissan and went to the Porsches. Okay, let's let's get this. Actually, I like this even more. It's better. The, the colors are better. All right, let's go. Let's go in. <clears throat> no, I'm going. I'm not gonna do the Porsche Cup car. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> stream. Yeah, all my streams are not for for kids. Per adesso no, Black Mamba. Non so cosa succederà in futuro, ma non, non ne abbiamo programmi di questo tipo per adesso. Mattia! And your brother Ivan! Hi Ivan! How you doing? <laughs> Alright, aggressive. Uh, 105 and uh, 80. Something like that. Alright. Oh my god, we're gonna die. We are gonna die. I'm always I'm always scared of the Porsche. I love it. It scares me to, to death. Il problema a Black Mamba è che non, non sappiamo cosa fare, perché con la pandemia ancora i piani non, non sono certi, non sappiamo my god the sound. Jesus from the bus 7000 rpm of the Honda into the screaming flat 6 at 9000 of the Porsche. Jesus. It's so rigid. What car I like most? I'm, I don't have a special car. I keep changing my mind from car to car. They're all my children. <laughs> oh, the sixth gear. Because you know, guys, the sixth gear has a different... Uh, Cog, which makes completely different sound. Lucas Soldano, our sound engineer, went there and, you know, make the uh, the recordings so nice. Sissi, can you share the link again as you did before? Thank you, mate. What a car. What a... What a car. Listen to that. Ah. <laughs> oh, understood. Hey Mirvet, thank you, thank you my friend. Glad that you you learned something. No oh, highs. Well the pressures are good, I don't know why, but they're already pretty well. At the rear, it's a little bit down. The front seems almost correct. Ah! 8,700 RPM.
No, non ci sono piani Plug Down already at 56.3. Jesus, what a missile. <laughs> Yeah, DRM cars are amazing. Not too much top speed. Ooh, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. much traction you just stomp on the accelerator it just goes okay 56.3 and uh, we have to fix the pressures più facile che puoi fare Carlos è l'altezza terra controlla le mie playlist anche in italiano su come fare i, se i step del setup step 1 step 2 step 3 troverai tutte le <coughs> scusa tutte le risposte 1 2 3 4 and uh, that's pretty good 1 2 3 ah, not, not much needed here Yeah, true, true, Matthew. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, we are again at 80 something. Okay, let's go out for another lap. Let's see if we can do the 55. I'm pretty sure we can do it. Obviously, you can see how the car is um, extremely. Mirvet, let's see first if they are really going to drive because with the pandemic we have no idea what's going to happen. It's, no, it's not possible to make plans for 2021. So you can see how this car is extremely fast around the turns, but obviously loses some uh, top speed. Because obviously the car has to do uh downforce from the rear wing even when you put the, the rear the rear wing at one it still generates a bit of drag to generate some downforce because it doesn't have that big of a diffuser as the other cars hey michael <laughs> Oh my god, what happened? Lost it. That will teach me to watch the chat. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't even know what happened there. Carlos, thank you so much, mate. Cheers. Thanks, buddy.
Uh, plug, yeah, it's awesome. My my life is gonna be miserable from all the manufacturers asking their car to go faster. But yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's great. Wish me luck. Yeah, the person went like, hey, eyes on me, eyes on me. <laughs> Presto, Luisino. I don't have the hammer here, otherwise I would have done it. <laughs> Yeah, stuff like that, plug, yeah, indeed. Even worse than that, unfortunately. But uh, it is what it is. It, it is, it is definitely very entertaining. On the limiter. <laughs> Maybe I should have kept the third there. You can break so late with the course. It's amazing how late you can break with this car. Down to 56 lows again. Oh, come on! Completely mistaken. The entry there. <laughs> it's on. No, not really, not really. I'm for the long term satisfaction, not for instant gratification. <laughs> hey, thank you, Bailey. Glad you liked it. But see, the person needs better driving, and I'm not driving so good right now. need to make different lines for the Porsche. I cannot use the same lines I was using with the Nissan. That's why I'm having troubles now.
Yeah, Benjamin, exactly that. Aris learns. Aris always learns. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Michele. Oh my god. One more lap. Yeah, that was better. Person needs his own lines. It's a bit of a different racing line. Not too much, but a bit different. Yeah, I think 55 is doable, absolutely. Again. I mean, again, we just, you know, use the aggressive and go. In it and I've lost all the time that's some extra grip but then I didn't know Needed some extra turning, but unfortunately I've lost the time again. Anyway. Ah, whatever. Anyway. But, I mean, you saw it. And, obviously, the Porsche being one of the most difficult cars you need to work much more with it you need to be uh to get a better driver the car asks for respect and asks for specific driving lines and driving techniques and possibly work on the setup this time again not to go faster but maybe make you a little bit more uh, comfortable driving it Anyway, oh, Mikael, come on, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, Mikael. Thanks so much. I suddenly... Oh, California. I love it. I love California. One of my favorite spots in the, in the world. Just once been, but I really, really would like to, to go back again. Ah. All right, so... Um, next, 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 let's go back to the Nissan and uh, do a little thing about the pressures that uh, Michele asked, and that would be a nice thing. So, pressures fine tuning, and I'm going back to the Nissan because obviously I remember the car, I know the car, and uh, yeah, it helps me. Oh, there's some old. Um, Ah, yes, because it's 2020. 
back to 2029. Oops. I need some... This. Okay. Good. Hey, Bolton. Yeah, doing fine. Thank you so much, mate. All right. All right, so um, let's let's get the aggressive setup. Uh, actually, now let's get the um, our good setup that has all the pressures correct and everything. All right. So, as you know, uh, we always do a couple of laps, and then we go back to the to the box and try to. Uh, fix the pressures in a way that all the uh, hot readings are around 27.5, 6, 7, around there, okay, uh, so that the car is stable. And we usually read the, um, the tires, pressures, when we cross the start-finish line, all right? Good. Green line, green line. Go, go, go. Now, how can you fine-tune the pressures once you have done this. So you have done this, you are pretty satisfied with the setup of the car, but on some turns you still don't feel the car that it is perfect, but on the other hand you wouldn't like to touch the setup, either because you can't sometimes, you just can't touch the setup for whatever reason, maybe uh, the setup needs more stability and you want to and you don't want to add extra wing as here because it is important for the lap type, all right? Uh, or for whatever reason, you don't want to change the setup. You just need a very, very small fine tuning, find some stability, or find some rotation on some situation. So let's see what we can do, all right? Let's do a couple of laps to uh, heat up the tires. and see what we can do to fine-tune the setup of the car by the pressure of the tires in just specific parts of the circuit, not everywhere. So, a couple of laps. See how much more stable the Nissan here is in comparison to the rear-engined Deutsch Engineering. <laughs> Some Dorifto. Nice indeed. Okay, now let's start our second lap here. Tires are already going up in pressure. I would like you guys to have a look at the HUD of the tires. While I'm going through the virus turn, watch out the pressures. They keep on rising because of course they're rising, but they change. They don't remain all the same. They change left and right depending on what we do at the track. So now it's 26.8 both left and right at the front inside here inside here 27th at the right 27 now you see there is a one psi difference towards the left still one psi difference towards the right sorry towards the right now we go to the straight line again You cannot, Max, so it's not uh, an information that we want to give away. Sorry about that. It's under NDA. Look at the pressures here. 
at the rear. 27.4, 27.3, left and right. 27.5 now, 27.3. 27.6 at the rear left, 27.3 at the rear right. Let's do another lap. So you see there's this difference, right? Hello, Pavel. Now, as we cross the finish line, the pressures are almost identical. 27.5, 27.4 at the straight line. Now, obviously, I'm not driving at the right of at the limit, but you have an idea. Now it's identical, 27.4. Oops, overdid it, sorry about that. But it's not so important. The important thing I want to show you right now is that depending on what turn you are on the circuit and how the tires are go into uh, under, under pressure, under, uh, you know, stress, Obviously, they heat up differently, and the gap, the delta between the left and the right pressures changes, okay? You can see again, now it's 27.3 at the left, 27.4 at the right. I'm always watching the rear pressures. Now, right now it's 27.3, 27.5, so there's more pressure at the right. Now it's becoming almost identical, 27.5, and now the pressure comes through the other side. 27.6 at the left, 27.2, sorry, 27.4 at the right. So you see how the pressures keep changing left and right, depending on what turn uh, of the circuit we are. Okay, and now we go back to the straight line, right? And after the final turn, you will see that the pressures come close together again. You see 27.6, 27.5, and this is it, all right? So around, somewhere around here, we usually press ESC, we go to the pits, we go to the garage, and we make so that our pressures are 27.6 all around, somewhere around there. And that pretty much works properly, no big issue, but, as I said, now it's the fine tuning. So let's say, let me see if I can show you this, maybe in the replay. Let's go here. Oops. I cannot sense. Anyway, uh, so let's say that if you remember, somewhere around here, my right pressures were higher than the left pressures. Okay? Obviously, if we concentrate on this turn of the circuit, okay, and we hit ESC when we are here, then we can change the balance of the pressures to have a different balance when we are on this turn. And if we do that, we will modify the balance of the car for this turn, and possibly other turns where the balance will be different, okay? Now, why is this important? As you know, um, two things happen with the, with the pressure. First of all, pressure makes the radius of the tire higher or, uh, I mean, bigger or shorter, right? Uh, and if you have more pressure on the tires, uh, the, the tire will be bigger, okay? We are talking, obviously, tiny differences in less than half millimeter or whatever, but there are differences. Especially when the tire goes under, uh, under load, heavy load, a, pressure with, uh, a tire with more pressure will flex less, for example, right? But most importantly, because the radius is, if you have more pressure, the radius is higher, is bigger, you have a bigger radius of the tire, for the same rotation, because obviously you have the same power coming and the same torque coming from the engine, so that tire 
will do the same number of rotations, but it will travel more, or at least it will want to travel more. The tire with the lower pressure, it has smaller radius and will all want to travel less. So what happens when you have two, two wheels? One wants to travel more and the other one wants to travel less. Well, obviously this one, right, will try to rotate the car. So the tire with the higher pressure will try to rotate the car because it wants to travel more, okay? It's like having, uh, you know, just two tires, two, two wheels, and one is bigger than the other, obviously it wants to rotate. Is that clear? So it's like having uh, those things like this here, okay? But this one is bigger, okay? And because it is bigger, it travels more and wants to rotate. So the bigger tire wants to rotate. If that was bigger, the bigger tire wants to rotate like that, okay? Now, this is very important information because it, it means that if your car rotates too much, you can raise the pressures from the other side and that will stabilize your car. If your car rotates too little for the given turn, you can, you know, raise the pressure from the side that rotates too little and it will rotate the car more, and so on. So, it's not, um, it's not uh, at all uh, um, a coincidence that for this very fast turn that I need stability, when I arrive here, my left tire has lower pressure than my right tire. Why? Because I need stability. I want the right tire to try to rotate the car and make it go straight while I'm going r right. So the right tire, again, is this one is bigger. And while I'm turning, this one, because it's bigger, it wants to rotate the car back to straight. And that gives me stability. Okay? Now, when I'm going away from here, it's all calculated from my fine tuning. I arrive into the next turn. I still have a little bit of difference, but by the mid of this turn, okay, the pressure is the same. The pressure is identical, left and right. And this helps me having the correct rotation from this second part of the turn, which is important. Now, when I exit this turn, the left side has much more higher pressure because it got more heat on it, and the right side has less pressure. So when we arrive at the next turn, again, this part of the car, the left car, wants to rotate towards the right, but the turn is the other way, and that gives me some stability, because it is another turn when I have instability while going to uh, turn in. So this is how you do it. If, for whatever reason, you find your car, okay, arriving, for example, at this turn. And you have a look at your pressures, and you see that the left pressures are higher than the right. You know that's going to be an issue because it's going to rotate more the car. It might not be an issue. You might want it. So this is something you can do on it, you know? So you can have more pressure on this turn, okay, to make the car rotate even more if you are having understeer for whatever reason. Let me show you. So, let's go back, return to the garage, set up, let's go to the pressures. We know that we have around a 0.2 difference left uh, and right at that turn. So let me put this two more and this two less. Okay, so we will, we will be certain when we arrive at uh, the end of the straight line, that the left side will have more um, uh, pressure than the right side. And this will make the car rotate even more towards the right. Okay? So let's see what is going to happen. IT again. So let's have a look at this. Again, we will need about two laps or three laps to understand what's going on. Ciao, Sadi, Yasu. 
So now we are focusing exactly and specifically on that very fast turn, all right? Obviously, we have to see what will happen to the rest of the circuit. But, you know, you can do this. Uh, GG Virus, the anti roll bars do much more bigger uh, effects on the handling. This is fine tuning. This is when you are finished with everything and you want just a tiny bit extra rotation or stability here and there on specific parts of the circuit. You can try this without touching the rest of the setup and see what happens. I'm not saying it will always work, but usually when everything is good and you feel the car good and you just want that little extra difference, you can play with this. For me, for my mental health, I find it very important to separate uh, the setup making in steps because if you start changing things all around you know by luck or you see how it turns around a lot here uh, or without much uh, you know uh, method and without following s specific steps then I get into confusion and I don't understand what I'm doing and so that's why I greatly greatly advise you to go and check my uh, uh, how to set up your car playlist which has you know step one step two step three step four what to do on each step so step one pressures you know pressures in terms of make everything perfect step two uh, right heads step three wheel rates and anti-roll bars uh, bump stops and so on after you have done all of that then go back to the pressures and fine-tune okay No, no, both, both front and rear. But rear are particularly um, sensitive because they are, uh, you know, the tires that, you know, they are uh, the um, the tires that bring the power from the engine, so they they push the car. So they are even more important. You feel it more. Now, just to give you a fast example, I change the rear tires a lot. Okay. Uh, but uh, normally I would change less both front and rear. Oh, <laughs> you see how the pressure was high, was climbing, and I've lost it on on the uh, on the curb. I've never lost it before on the curb like that. But now I was I wasn't paying attention. It was my error, but I really lost it like. Boom, because the, the left pressure was climbing really, really fast. Hey, Clapoli, no worries. I'm, I'm here for this tonight. Tonight it's question and answers. We have also plenty of material to cut and make small video edits from this long live stream in the next days. It's gonna be nice. Right, so now we have drivable pressures all around. Look, some understeer. I'm gonna have understeer here. You see, I have understeer, and then obviously it goes into oversteer because I force the car way too much. And see how easy it rotates when I go into the accelerator to the right. Why? Because I had too much pressure on the left. You see how it goes. Now it should be normal again. Now it should be very neutral in handling. Yes, no problems. Look at that. Great traction. ACC physics can uh, simulate whatever we want. No problems on that. We never do physics just for a specific... The physics engine doesn't simulate just a specific car, you know. Can simulate whatever we want. Okay, so the pressures are identical. It should be destined to go in, but as we go out, 
gonna have issues. That whoop, that's it. And now I'm gonna have even more issues here. You see? Oh, oh, look at that. Even too much. Okay. It rotates. See how it rotates? Because it's much higher at the left. And here instead, no problem. Even understeer, you see? In the mid turn, we had understeer there. You see, understeer again. While here, lots of rotation. Look at this. Look at how much rotation we had. Okay, why is that? Because we had 28.3 PSI at the left and 27.4 PSI at the right. So the left tire was much uh, bigger in radius and the right tire was smaller in radius. Now, also, when you do that, be very careful. You don't want to have extreme differences because if you have extreme differences like now, it will also mean that it's not just the difference in radius but it is also the difference in spring rate, which starts to become important because obviously the tire with the air inside is a spring, okay? And you also have differences in uh, footprint because at 28.4 or 0.5 that we had, the footprint is less. So you also having less grip because the footprint is smaller. So always, that's why I'm saying to you, this is a... Uh, um, fine-tuning once you are done and everything you can try and go 0 0.2 0 0.1 left to right difference in a different places of, of the track i hope it was quite clear i know it's a little bit difficult to understand when i'm you know explaining it but i think that if you try it uh, it will be very clear to you so instead of once you are done with your setup it's good to go, you feel well, but at some turns you feel it could be different. Instead of hitting ESC at the finish straight line, hit ESC just before the turn that you have the issues, go into the setup, okay, so hit ESC just before the turn, okay, go into the setup, see how the hot pressures are, and adjust that hot pressures by a little bit so that you have a different... Um, readings left to right uh, in, in the pressures so that you modify the radius of the tires just before the turn okay all right hope that answered your questions guys Again, as I said, do not mm, hope and uh, mm, think that this, this fine-tuning is going to give you seconds. Uh, probably it won't even going to give you a uh, tenth of a second. But definitely it will make you more comfortable with the car. You could be able to maybe attack more, so that might you know, improve your lap time. Uh, most importantly for me, it's very important during the race. It gives me a uh, more, you know, safe and uh, more predictable car for what I want from my driving style, and that helps me being more and more and more consistent. Michele, I hope that 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 replied your your uh, your question and uh, doubt. Yeah. So there you have it. It is a nice car, isn't it? It is a pretty car. Absolutely. Right, so. What's next? Some questions? What what we said? Why do you have issues to get? Uh, if if you have issues to get the pressures correct in a in a truck, 
then unfortunately that means that you're not consistent yet uh, so either that or you are touching uh, with your tires you're going a little bit outside of the asphalt you know you are touching the grass going in back again you are losing pressures because of that so when we start doing our setup and the first step is always adjust the pressures you need to not go for the lap time you need to go for consistent stable easy laps even if they are slow without getting to the risk to get the car outside the track okay let me show you what i mean non abbiamo piani in questo momento ancora e poi come ho detto sempre ragazzi non sono io eh, che vi dico le novità o le preview arrivano dai canali ufficiali sempre non da me um, so you, you said silverstone let me show you something about silverstone hopefully it's not in uh, during night right now no it's okay still still good so when we say hop on the aggressive setup do a couple of laps okay and check your your pressures and you say well i tried this but unfortunately it's very difficult to adjust the pressures because they keep changing and i don't understand what to do this is what happens usually i'm not saying that's what you're doing but my experience says that Unfortunately, this is what happens. So you get out, especially in a track like Silverstone. Okay. And you start things like that. Bam. Then you go here. Bam. You see, exit. And then again, here, you cut a lot. Bam. And then here again. Bam and so on and so on now when you do this okay at the first laps when the tires are still cold and the pressures are low uh, what happens is that some of the pressure because of the tires the tire pressure is low the uh, tire sidewalls are still soft they move a lot when they get hits like that from the curves and from going outside and then in in the track again so they get hits and they release some pressure outside you lose pressure okay so even if you do three laps uh, you have hit up their tires the pressures have gone up but you do not know how much pressure you've lost oh, sorry ah. so you do not know how much pressure you've lost because you went outside like me like this or simply even by just cutting a little bit the road so you probably lost some pressures, but you don't know how much. Which means that when you go back to the, t to the garage, like that, okay, and you check the hot pressure, and the hot pressure says 25.1, right? And so you say, okay, 25.1, I need to have 27.1, so I need 2 PSI more. No, you don't know that. Because it might have been that your hot pressure was 25.5, but because you went outside the road, you've lost some pressure and it went down to 25.1. So you want the 27.1. You raise by 2 psi here. Okay. You raise by 2 psi here on the cold. Then you go out again. And instead of having 27.1, you have 27.7 now because you didn't cut the road. So again, not correct. Go back, go in, and you don't know. So when we say go out and do two or three laps, okay, what you really have to do is this thing. So you have to go out and you have to do two, three, four laps, whatever, but in a consistent way, pressing the tires, but never, never keep the car as more as possible on the asphalt, uh, use as little curbs as possible, and absolutely don't go, you know, outside the road absolutely not if you see that you went outside the road over the lap go in start again with cold tires again so you see just don't go out you have to do this because if you go outside you might lose pressure fucked up that's i i believe that's the reason why you're not able to uh find out uh, the correct pressures on some tracks, especially, for example, 
Silverstone when you have lots of downforce, you have very high speeds, and to do the lap time, you need to cut. You know, you need to put your tires outside the road. But for your when you while you're still doing the setup, especially the pressures at start, do not cut. Start slow, bring the pressures up, work again, then start pushing. I hope I hope that helps you. I think that's the, the why it's happening. You don't know how to do steering, unwinding, right on exits. You mean when you have oversteer, how to counter steer and go back, how to to keep the 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 oversteer correct and don't over uh, correct or whatever. This is what you mean. Perfect pressures around 27.4, 27, 28, somewhere around there. More like finding uh, the right wheel pedal balance. Um, I have a, I have a video. Maybe CC driver can find it. I have a video that is called "How to Realign." For, from oversteer, how to catch a drift. It's a very short video. And that explains very, very well, I think, that and you will see that it's all into the steering wheel. And especially not during, but after, once, once you have to catch the drift. Uh, and uh, yeah, th th this is the, the most important thing to, to do, to learn how to realign. Hey, Bobby, no worries. Good night, good night, take care. Hey, CC driver, thank you so much, mate. I mean, what could I have done without CC driver? I don't know. So go have a look at this video. Maybe this will answer your question. Okay, I believe that the most important thing uh, for maintaining uh, the, uh, the drift and catching it is how you work with the steering wheel. Uh, Luckily, with the GT3 cars, we can also work a little bit with the traction control, and I won't say forget the the accelerator, but almost forget it. You know, uh, the traction control does a lot of this work for you. You're losing time though when when you are you know oversteering. Have have a look at that. Uh, well, if you if you already had a look at this, then the next thing you need to learn is it pays a lot, even if you have. Um, actually, let's see if I have a video. It works in any sim. It works in reality, Daniel. The faster uh, realignment works in reality. It's the best way. And the only way, if you want to learn how to drift. Now, Voy, Voy Xtentro, uh, it depends on the car. Uh, each car has, uh, has different consumption, different uh, fuel loads. Uh, Bentley has a, uh, a bug in 132 liters, the 2018 version. Uh, it should go back to 120 liters from the next update. So let's see. Okay. Mm. Let's see if I can find a fast lap here. Oh, uh, CC, absolutely. Um, I mean, Luca is always trying to, you know, improve, find extra stuff and uh, improve, especially the uh, ambient and the Doppler effects and all that stuff. So I want to show you something here. Okay, so let's go in. But uh, this time, watch my accelerator. Okay, watch my accelerator. Now you will see that there are 
uh, situations. Maybe let's go to a fast lap. Somewhere around here, possibly. Okay, fast lap. Look at this. Let's go slow. Okay. Go in. Look how I'm going into the accelerator. Oops, that's not a good lap. Sorry. Let's go this one, maybe. That's a better lap, possibly. So look how I will go into the accelerator. You see, it's gradual. Even if I can go full, it's always gradual. Look at that again. And gradually up. I never go flat. And if I do, it's, it's, a, it's an error on my side. You have to go in the accelerator as soon as possible, but never do this, never do this. Do not do the clap. Okay, learn to do as fast as possible but always, um, look at that, how progressive it is. It's always like that. It's this. Even if you do it fast, do it progressively. Vap, fast. Vap, vap. Never, never do this. Okay? And I will tell you why. You see, again, look at that. I let off the accelerator, and then progressive. Vap. If you see it stopping and going higher again, this is my error. I'm not good enough. Okay, let's go farther forward. Okay, look at this again. Accelerator. Progressive, you see? Now, if I, if I show you again at full speed, you will see that it is fast, but it is a progressive. You see? Now it's full speed again. Look. Look how progressive it is. Zap. Okay. Let's go a little bit forward. Again. Progressive. Fap. Zap. Progressive. This, what I'm doing here, it's not because if I don't go progressive, I will, I will spin, so I have to modulate. No. I still have enough traction to not spin. But if you do this, okay, the whole engine, drivetrain, tires is an elastic combination of things. And if you give tons of instant as fast as possible power from one, it will bend the other, it will bend the other, and it will bend the other. And the tires will slip a little bit. The traction control will understand, even if there is traction, it doesn't matter. I mean, you probably won't even notice it to counter steer or something. It would probably have enough traction, you know, to, to accelerate properly. But all those little things will engage the traction control, will make the tires slip just a tiny bit. Even if it doesn't unbalance the car, it would slip. And that's into a whole uh, circuit lap is a tenth of a second of loss of time. A tenth of a second. So, start giving, ac accelerate before, as nearly as possible, go full on the accelerator as fast as possible, but always progressive, always progressive. Never do this. If you catch yourself doing that with your foot, okay, because you are like, stamp into it, you're doing it wrong. Okay, you're doing it wrong. So don't do this. Thank you, thank you, Virus. Thank you so much, mate. Yes, yes, it, it's not slowly on the gas. That's the difference. I'm not telling you go slowly on the gas because this is going to make you lose time. I'm telling you, even if you can go hard, like on the accelerator, like, like a hammer, you know, pam, don't do it. Do it fast, but progressively. Always try to do, you know, just zap. Like, like if your, your foot could do this with the pedal. It's not possible to do this, but try to do, to do that. It's, a, a, I don't know, probably one third, one fifth of a, of a tenth of a second difference. But it pays in terms of how many meters you do. And try to watch the replays of aliens, you will see that very rarely they do that. Very rarely. They, they all do a little, a tiny little bit of whoop, whoop. You can see them going very progressively on the accelerator.
Absolutely, absolutely, Daniel. Absolutely helps with overall tire wear, car balance, all of that stuff. All of that stuff, yes. Uh, on the contrary, usually, not always, usually, especially when you are arriving from a very long uh, straight and with downforce cars, you want to go flat down on the brake instantly. Why is that? Because the brakes are cold, usually, and they are not able to instantly lock the tires even if you do this at first they need a tenth or two tenths of a second or something like that before they catch up you know heat and they start having the full power to lock the tires and maybe the abs you know starts uh, engaging also the abs is much better um, so on the especially again when you are arriving from from a long uh, straight uh, you need to wow! You need to go to the brake pedal as fast as you go. You, you want to do that with the brake pedal. Uh, you don't want to do that when uh, you just finish braking zone and finish a turn, and then instantly you have another one that you need to brake a little bit. There, you need to be much more smooth and progressive, okay? Because the the, the brakes are still in good temperature and they will lock the, the tires and uh, make the ABS engage way too much. Yeah, almost crossed there. <laughs> the Nissan is amazing when you change gears like <laughs> All right, guys. Questions? Doubts? Requests? No, requests. No, you cannot do requests. <laughs> and at least not requests for the, for the game. <laughs> okay. I see the chat. The last sector is extremely difficult. Makes all the difference. I was comparing my lifetimes with the aliens of the championship and pretty much the last sector was where was i was you know losing three four tenths of a second while on the other sector i mean the first sector i was practically almost the same second sector i would lose one two tenths of a second last sector i would lose almost three four tenths of a second with the aliens uh, dream series honestly i don't know personally personally i would love to make the old uh, prototype c cars i love them i just like how they i think they would be terrible to drive because they would be very extremely pitch sensitive and uh, uh, you know rock hard table hard uh, suspensions and everything but boy do i look how do, do i love i love how they look you know the old uh, Jaguar and the Peugeot and uh, th those cars, the the old prototype C from the 90s, I think. That, that, that those cars are so beautiful, so beautiful. And then I like the uh, the vintage cars around 60s, 70s. I really love them. That era. Uh, yeah, th th those type of cars. Is the, the t I, I generally like, um, you know, touring cars, closed cars. I don't particularly like uh, open wheel cars. Personal preference. Uh, more options. Well, the main problem between, you know, because it is a game, it's obviously the refresh rate, because otherwise you would need a NASA PC if we up the refresh rate to something like 1000 Hz or 2000 Hz. Uh, we can do it, but it won't go... It just... it won't run in any PC. Uh, but most of the... I mean, the physics engine that you see right now... Uh, 
uh, is what our knowledge permits us to do. Uh, there's no compromise like, ah, you know, it's a game, let's not do this. Uh, we always go flat out on realism, uh, and that's what we can do uh, properly. And um, things that they are not in, in terms of realms, which I don't know what it is, you know, uh, they are not in, not because we did a compromise because it's a game, but because we don't know what it is or how to simulate it yet, you know. So that's it. Uh, now, obviously, if you tell me, yes, but for example, it would be nice if the car goes into the sun trap and it digs in and you cannot exit. The, yeah, it would be nice. Uh, honestly, I don't know how, we don't know how to do it, uh, how to make the, the sun trap, you know, uh, having uh, displayment simulation so that the car digs in and uh, does it. And obviously, it's lower in the priority list. You know, the priority list is to make the cars realistic as possible during driving, not when it stop into the sun trap. Uh, Claudio, it's not that easy. Uh, in terms of, um, I'll give you an example. Um, if you use map three or whatever, I mean, if you use the the map that consumes less, uh, it's still going to save you a small amount of, of fuel, a very small amount of fuel. We're talking about one, two, three, four percent, five percent, stuff like that. Um, and um, sometimes even less or none at all. Why is that? You see that log straight here, for example. Now, when you are using a lower, uh, a different AQ map, which in theory should consume less, for sure also have, has less power. Less power means that you will go flat out on the accelerator for the whole straight for more time going flat out on the accelerator for more time means that you consume more. So you see, it's a problem. Um, so if you really want to um, you know, uh, make an economy run and consume as less fuel as, as possible, yes, obviously use a different AQ map that permits a leaner uh, you know, uh, uh, fuel mix and that will make your car consume less. But also, the, again, the most important factor is the thing between the steering wheel and the seat. Your driving style can make a big difference on how much uh, the car consumes. To give you an example, here, you see, uh, this is a typical term that somewhere around here we have to brake, okay? a little bit hard, as late as possible, go into the turn, and as you see, I'm already stabilizing the car on the accelerator, okay? Because otherwise the car will rotate. And I might even lose it, like this, okay? So I have to stabilize it with the accelerator. Let's go somewhere around here, for example. Um, I want to show you even here. So, again here, you we, we brake hard, and I'm already on the accelerator trying to stabilize the car because, uh, actually no, that was a downshift, but after the downshifts here, you see, I'm going on the accelerator to stabilize the car because I know that if I don't go to the accelerator, the car might over-rotate. Now, if you're trying to use uh, as low fuel as possible, uh, you could try a more safe and understeer setup that lets you coast without using the accelerator, okay, for as long as possible, even sometimes not even braking before the turn, but let the accelerator and coast for, for some meters, go down with the speed and go in the turn without braking. This kind of driving style will save tons of fuel, tons of fuel, and it is actually what they are doing nowadays uh, both in Formula One, uh, which have very limited fuel consumption, and they were doing it also in um, 
in LMP, LMP1 racing and so on. So, yeah, uh, lift cost will save you tons of fuel, much more than whatever AQ can do. The AQ can help you by 2, 3, 4 percent, uh, and again, the uh, driving technique can help you by another 10 percent. Hey Tortellini, welcome. Uh, yeah, Merck Map 2 is particularly, you know, uh, economic. That doesn't happen to all cars, though. Depends on the car. <laughs> Put some fuel on it, on the 911. Uh, I can give you another, um, uh, it, it's, sometimes it's useful, you know, when you're trying to save fuel, don't push. Because if you're saving fuel, it means that you're doing it to, you know, um, gain a pit stop, right? So do one less pit stop than your opponents. So if you are into the race, especially at the start of the race when there are lots of cars, and you see that you're faster and you want to overtake them because you're faster, that's wrong. Don't do it. Stay where you are. Be patient. Because even if you gain five places, but you are forced to do another pit stop, it means nothing. Maybe stay five places, uh, you know, uh, backwards. But then when you're going to do one less pit stop, you're going to gain ten places. Neuro, we are not pushing esports, honestly, uh, for many various reasons, both legal, economical, focus, whatever. We are just trying to do the best uh, simulator we can and possibly the best racing simulator game that, that we can. That's what we do. If people want to use it for esports, well, well done. But... Uh, our job is to do it as good as possible. Obviously, if people, you know, asking for extra future for the esports, we will try to, to deliver. But we are not doing something specifically for, for esports. Oh, thank you, Kaidan. I will, I will tell the guys. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you, BG Sketch. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys. So, um, I think I think that's it. I, I can see the chat, you know, calming down a little bit, which is great. So I guess we have replied most of your questions. I hope you had fun. Uh, I have no idea what to do next week, but we will find out something. Maybe I can participate on some race or, or whatever. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, that's it. As usual, keep an eye on the channel. Subscribe, maybe you know, hit the bell, all that stuff. Not just for me to, to grow the channel, but it will also, uh, you know, notify you, as usual, uh, when I release uh, videos. Uh, not just for the live streams, but because uh, usually, uh, and I will do this with this, uh, with this with tonight's live stream, I take the whole live stream and I cut it into small pieces, uh, and uh, then I post the, the small videos, uh, that they are more focused in different questions or in different uh, uh, experiments or different tutorials, whatever. Uh, and obviously, you, you will get notified when, when I release them. And I especially intend to do this with tonight's uh, video because I think we have did some pretty nice arguments about that. Right, so 
uh yeah so thank you thank you everybody uh, now that i <laughs> now that i want to close the live stream i can see the chat going crazy again so well done uh no no i cannot i cannot as usual guys uh, i cannot do previews i cannot do previews i have no idea guys always from the official channels i can i have no idea i won't tell you previews i won't tell you anything about that so thank you again for everything guys uh Keep it cool, keep it safe, uh, do lots of races, enjoy yourselves, and uh, see you on the next live stream, right? Cheers, thank you, good night, bye!